in a debate between FTFE and FTAP World, most of the time was spent on the question whether the star trails would change direction if you turn around or not. FTAP World said that they do change and Greg claimed that they still are rotating around Polaris. Both were right, but they missed the fact entirely that it doesn't change that star trails like we see them would be impossible on a flat earth. In general, flat earthers claim that you cannot determine the shape of the ground you are standing on by looking at the stars. Now it seems to be impossible to replicate the star trails on a flat earth. In order to research that topic, I first must explain how I see the flat earth model that, by the way, no, no flat earther has ever produced. And if they have produced one, like the Gleason map, they claim that it isn't a model, or it isn't their model anymore. I see it as just a flat plane. I don't assume a size, nor whether it is round, square shaped, or in the form of a diamond, it's just a flat plane that could be of infinite size. Then there are the stars. It doesn't matter to me what the stars are, they can be just lights in the sky, small perforations in some kind of dome, they could be reflections or even holographic images. Of course, they also could be ball shaped fusion reactors in the vacuum of space, but again, it doesn't matter. We perceive them as lights in the sky that seem to move in a very particular pattern. What I did was try to replicate these patterns as seen from a flat, motionless, solid plane. What patterns am I trying to replicate? First, the apparent circular motion that we can observe in star trails, where, looking north, the stars seem to rotate counterclockwise. And when looking south, they seem to rotate clockwise. Looking east or west at the equator, you can see a circular motion to the left, a circular motion to the right, and a transition between these circular motions in the form of one straight up as a semicircle over your head. From now on I won't be using the words south, east and west anymore. These are confusing terms because on a flat earth south can be any direction as can be east and west. I will however use the word north. Both globe earthers and flat earthers agree on the observation that there is a point called north above which there is one star, Polaris, around which star all the other stars appear to rotate. Other directions I will call away from north and perpendicular to away from north. The models I show here have no scale. They could be small, they could be big. No flat earther has claimed to know the distance to the stars. The only thing they have said about this subject is that the stars are close by, not trillions of kilometers away, as the globe model claims. The first model I made has a random set of stars orbiting Polaris, that is the orange star, at random heights and at random radii. This top view shows that they are all concentric around Polaris, though not at the same heights. When we look at them from ground level, it immediately becomes clear that this pattern is not what we see in the sky. So the stars must be arranged in a more regular pattern. And the only pattern that gives these uh, circular motions turns out to be a dome shape. When we place them in this position, again concentric around Polaris but at different heights, we see, when we look at them from ground level, that they form circles, just like we see in reality. They turn counterclockwise, so we are looking in the direction of north. When we turn around and look away from north, we see no change in direction. The star trails are still counterclockwise, for their trajectories to look like circles, by the way. 
So this cannot be the right model. The next try is to tilt the whole dome some 70 degrees, taking care that Polaris still is above the ground as both globe earthers and flat earthers agree upon. Now we see, looking north, again the counterclockwise star trails. And when we turn around and look away from north, we see that the star trails follow a clockwise path. So in that aspect, this model agrees with reality. But then we move to the midpoint of the dome and look perpendicular to the direction away from north. We don't see the vertical star trails that we see in reality. These star trails are slanted. There are other problems too. First of all, the eccentric position of Polaris in this mo model. This would mean that the North Pole, lying straight beneath Polaris, would also be positioned this far away from the center of the dome. And standing straight under Polaris and looking up, you should see circular star trails around Polaris. And you don't. You see very ellipsoid star trails. And to top it off, where are the stars going in their trajectory when they reach the ground? They disappear and return after some time later to complete their circular motion. So I made the fourth model where Polaris is at ground level and the axis around which the stars rotate lies flat on the flat earth. We now have a north star, Polaris, and the point on the other side around the axis between which points the stars rotate. Now, looking away from north, we see star trails rotating clockwise. Looking north, we see circular star trails rotating counterclockwise. Looking perpendicular to the direction away from north, we see vertical star trails, so the optical problems are solved. Well, not completely. In this model, you can only see half circles and never whole circles. In reality, star trails consist of both complete circles and partial circles. And the other problems have become even greater. First of all, the fact that Polaris lies at ground level. Everybody will agree with me that this cannot be the case. You can stand on the GP of Polaris and it obviously is not lying at, on your feet. Another problem is that you now all of a sudden have two poles. In fact, you have these always because rotation requires an axis and an axis requires two poles, both on ground level and on opposite side of the earth. And the main problem still exists. Where are this time all the stars going half of the time? The only way this model could function is when they complete their circular trajectory under the flat plane, which must mean that the flat earth is of limited dimensions. I made a fifth model, where the whole axis is positioned higher above that flat plane. Only the problem of Polaris lying on ground level and those regarding seeing only partial circles are solved. All the other problems are just as severe as before. All of this makes no sense, as a matter of fact it is ludicrous. However, if you change the flat plane into a ball it all make, makes logical sense and it comports to reality. It's not proof of a ball, it's compelling evidence that the earth cannot be flat. 